Oh man, I'm tired. But hey, I know what'll get me going. Wake me up. It's some factoring. I have to take my mask off. What am I doing? So, we begin factoring in seventh grade with uh, GCF. GCF is the greatest common factor. And what makes it seventh grade is it, it has variables. What will make it high school is that the factor itself will be a polynomial. But today we're doing GCF and the factor itself is going to be a monomial. We're just going to take one term out. And the GCF divides into everything, so we should know that a divisor is what we're looking for and it is the number we divide everything by. We're still going to use the area model to help us out. I might not use it all the time, but I'm going to start off that way. And factoring is just the, the reverse distributive property. So let's go back in time for a hot second and review distributing. So over here I have five groups of the quantity x plus 2. So if I was to be visual about it, I would use algebra tiles. And I say that this block is going to be called my x block. And these are just my one block. It's just a one. This is the variable, this is not. So I have five groups. One, two, three, four, five. There's five of these groups. And in each group is an x plus two. So this is an area model because the length five times the or the width x plus two makes my area, which is five x's and ten ones. This is distributive property. So I'm not gonna do the area model. Uh, well not with the algebra tiles anyway. I'm gonna do the area model again. We're gonna distribute an example A of four. There are two terms, an x and a negative 2. The 4 touches the parentheses, so the 4 touches the box. 4 times x is 4x. Four groups of a xylophone is 4 xylophones. Sorry, I wrote it small. And then 4 groups of negative 2 would be negative 8. So this is a 4x uh, and a negative 8 or a minus 8. Subtraction is adding the opposite. So I can write subtraction or I can write plus a negative 8. All right. Let's look at this one again. I'm distributing the 5 to this binomial. First term is 3. Second term is a negative x. I'm afraid that if you don't do add oppo, you won't remember that that, ne that, that x is negative. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times a negative x is a negative 5x. You don't want to write you you don't want to write 5 and then negative x cuz it'll look like 5 minus x and I'm not subtracting, I'm multiplying. So negative 5 times the x. So this answer is 15 minus 5x or 15 plus a negative 5x or negative 5x plus 15. Addition to community. So if I wanted to rewrite it, I could, or if it was multiple choice and I needed to find a different answer, I have to remember these properties. Okay, so that's review. Now let's do that backwards. So I'm going to give you the product and ask you the factors. Before I gave you the factors, I gave you what you're supposed to multiply and I asked you for the product. I asked you to multiply. Now I'm telling you, quote unquote, the answer or the product, and I'm asking you to reverse it and tell me what did I multiply to get that. So it helps to start with models. So I have eight X's and 14 negatives. So here's my gobbledygook. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight X's, and here's 14 negatives. Now, if I'm going to do the area model, I need to make it look like a rectangle. So you need to push this stuff around and redraw it on your paper 
so that I don't have any empty spaces and I can see a rectangle. So here's how I did it. I did it like this. I have a rectangle from my gobbledygook. Now, if I can just read the sides of my rectangle, I will have the factors, the length and the width that made this area. So this is still 8x minus 14. It's just arranged a lot nicer. On this side, I have two of these rows. And in each row, I see a 4x. I see 4x's, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 negatives. Okay, I'm going to draw my braces here. I have two groups of a 4x and a negative 7. I can write it negative 7 with a positive 4x. I can write it 4x minus 7, which is more common. Addition is commutative, so remember, we got to know these properties. So I got two groups of a 4x and a negative 7. And that multiplies to make. There's the 8x, 2 times 4x, just to check our work. And 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Okay? All we're doing is reversing what we've been doing. So, I'm not going to draw the picture this time, okay? And maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I could draw the picture in class. I'm going to try to do this without the picture. What I'm trying to do is get this on my screen, though. I can't see it. There it is. What? I was hoping that if I use my old school video camera that it would update faster than it did with Screencastify, but in any event, okay. So, when you do GCF, you are looking for the greatest common factor. You sit there and you ask yourself, self, what is the biggest number or thing, because sometimes it can be letters, that will go into everything? What divides into a 3x and a 3? Well, what did I just say twice? Three. Three divides into both of these. So this is how I like to show my work. I know three goes into both, and I know that three is the biggest thing that goes into both. So three is my GCF. So I'm going to write that on the outside. And what is three divided by three? It's not nothing. Anything divided by itself is 1, and that other thing there is still there, x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So, so the answer, it either can look like this, or remember, 1 has invisibility power when it's a coefficient. But I can't have an invisible anything here, because then it'll look like it's a 0. So. When it's just the number by itself, you have to write the 1. When it's the number in front of the letter, you don't have to write the 1 because 1 xylophone and a xylophone mean the same thing. Okay? So this is one way to show the work. Let me go back to the area model for a second. So I got a 4x plus 6. There's two terms. It is my area. It is inside my rectangle. Now you have to ask yourself, self? What's the biggest number, or letter, or thing, or term, that goes into everything? And um, you're going to say 2. And then I'm going to ask you, 2 times what is 4x? 2 times what is 4x? It's 2x. 2 times what is 6? positive 3. So normally we write our answer like this, 2, and then parentheses, the other factor. Parentheses next to a number means multiply, so that's what I'm doing. I'm multiplying the 2, and I'm multiplying the quantity 2x plus 3. And um, I'm just showing work a different way. I could have also done it the way I did the last one. So it, it depends on you which way works best for you. Do you want to ask yourself, you know, what goes into both, and then divide? And write the other factor. And, and division is the same as finding the missing multiple. So 
if I, I'm dividing both of these by 2, I can ask myself, 4 divided by 2 is what? Or 2 times what is 4? 6 divided by 2 is what? Or 2 times what is 6? Okay? Now, these are simple numbers. As time goes on, the numbers get less simple. So let's hit the brakes. And let's practice some prime factorization. Now let's remember what prime means. Prime means it's only divisible by itself and 1. So that's like in elementary school when you did factor trees. Except I'm not going to draw the trees on the paper. I'm just going to list out the factors. And we just want to practice this because it's the building blocks to doing the harder questions. So I want to find the GCF of just 5, 10, and 15. And even though you might already know the answer, just bear with me and let's list out the prime factors. 5 is only divisible by itself and 1, so it's prime. 10 is divisible by 2, and 2 goes into 10 5 times, so 2 times 5. Okie dokies, 15 is divisible by 3 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So when I want the greatest common factor, I want to know which one is the same in all of them. And it's nice when you have the list because you can just look. All of these have 5. The GCF is 5. And you're like, Mrs. Roberts, I don't understand why I'm doing this. This is so easy. I don't need to do this. Okay, just bear with me because watch. I will show you why I do what I do. Check out the next one. I got 4, 8, and 6. I want to know the GCF, and I want you to practice prime factorization. What are the factors of 4? What goes into 4? You do 2 times 2 to get 4. What goes into 8? So if you're going to tell me 4 times 2, I'll write the 2 down because it's prime, but I'm not going to write the 4 down because it's not prime. I'm going to change the 4 into 2 times 2. So the prime factors for 8 is 2 times itself, 3 times. Otherwise known as 2 cubed, by the way. A little exponent practice. 6 is 2 times 3. I look at my list. I ask myself, what is the greatest common factor? What do I see in every list? I circle it. I see the 2. All right, moving on. Getting a little harder. 12. So, so what do you say multiplies and make 12? If you said 6 times 2, well, 2 I'll write down because it's prime. But 6 we're going to factor again. 6 factors into 2 times 3. Does it matter what order I put these numbers in? No, because multiplication is commutative. But if you're taking notes, you better do it the same as me so it's easier to understand. Okay, so you could, if you said, you know, 6 times 2, it looks like this. If you said 4 times uh, 3, it still looks like this. So that's why we do prime factors. Go as low as we can go. 15 is 5 times 3. Both of those numbers are prime. Can't go any lower. 30, I think of the 3 times 10, but 10 is not prime. 10 is composite. So um, what did I say, 10? 10 is 2 times 5. What do I see in all 3? It is 3. The GCF of 12, 15, and 30 is 3. That's, that's old stuff. That's old stuff. Now, let's put some letters in there. Okay, find the GCF of 5x, 10x, and 15. Now, it's very similar to this question except it has X's here. What goes into all of them? Well, 5 does. I can't say X because I don't see an X there. How about this one? What goes into an X, a 4X, and a 5X? What do you see in all of them? There is an X in all of those. And how about this one? 2, 4Y, and 6X. Uh, do they all have the same letters? No, but as far as the numbers go, a 2 will go into all of those. Here's a neat trick that I forgot to show you a second ago. When I'm looking for what's left over, so if I want to know how many times 3 goes into 12, 
I see what's left over. It's 4. How many times is 3 going to 15? I see it. It's 5. How many times is 3 going to 30? I can see it. It's 10. So my list method, because it's so neat, will show you the other factor, the missing factor. Okay? You'll want to keep that in mind when you're doing these questions on the bottom. Okay, these questions on the bottom are the ones you want to want to do on your own. And if you're going to do the area model, then I recommend you, we're going to box these in. And this question number just gets in the way. So I'm just going to cross it off. What goes into both a 2 and a 6x? 2 does. If you do 2 divided by 2, you get 1. If you do 6x divided by 2, you get 3, and you still have the x, and it's positive. And if you don't believe me, you check your work. 2 times what is 6x? 2 times 3x. 2 groups of 3 xylophones is 6 xylophones. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. And I, I rewrite the answer with the GCF out in front and the other factor, which is a polynomial, in parentheses. You need more help? You check with me in class. Make sure you watch the other videos on the list on Schoology or on my YouTube uh, playlist. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon.